Welcome to Black Books Matter UK, where our mission is to create space for the diverse world we live in through the power of books. <laughs> Pretty good. How about you? <laughs> yeah, I'm really good. I'm Jack. It's lovely to meet you. Ah, nice to meet you. Are you? What time is it where you are? It is 11:51. Ah, in the morning. But that's in there. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So you're at the start of your day. I'm at yeah. the end of mine. Awesome. <laughs> you're ready. Okay. So my first question is about how you come up with these thrilling adventures for Amari to embark on, particularly. The second novel. Did you already plan for there to be a second novel? Have you already planned the second storyline? Do you do them together at the same time? Or did you not know what was going to happen in the second one once you'd finished the first? So I have like the first three books planned out. Um, but what happens is I'll, I'll, have, I'll have a plan. And I'll, I'll, I'll mean to stick to that plan. And then I'll start writing. And I'm like, I'm not using that plan. <laughs> so I end up, in, and so I end up, you know, having to kind of make it up as I go along. But I feel like the story ends up being a lot better that way. And so I don't know. That's just how I work, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So you have kind of a free flow vibe. But how I get there it tends, it tends to change. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Do you do like the characters or the world first? Kind of what's the process look like within that free flow? Oh, well, so for this book, uh, for the first book, um, um, I was actually done with the writing. So I, this is something fun I would do. Um, cause I, was, I was actually going toward medicine and I had these long science classes that were super boring, but you got, you got to go through them. And so I needed something to kind of break up, kind of break up all that, all that, all that science. And so I used to love men in black. And so I thought, well, what if it wasn't just aliens? What if it was like all the supernatural creatures that are like living among us? Like what if a witch lived next door? And if you had fairies in your, you know, your backyard, you know, something cool like that. And so I just kind of played with that a little bit. And then one day Amari just kind of popped into my head. And I was like, oh man, I gotta do something now with this story. I got a character, I got a setting. Now I gotta make a story. And so for this world, um, uh, definitely the world came first and then the characters came second. Um, but now that I have a world already established is super like the second and third book i'm definitely with the more more character focus first and then a world kind of builds off of that if that makes any sense so it kind of reverse with the second and third book yeah <laughs> no that's amazing you've now you know you've got the world that it happens in yeah. now everything else just happens within that that's yeah cool. absolutely <laughs> so of course the series is being turned into a feature film that is a phenomenal achievement congratulations oh thank you so much and <laughs> We love using all kinds of mediums of storytelling to get kids into reading here at Black Books Matter UK. So we love that there will be a film coming out. Of course, Marseille Martin has already been cast as a Mari, but anyone in the world, actor, someone from your life, anyone, uh -huh. to play Amari's best friend, Elsie, and the infamous Dylan, who <laughs> would you be? Oh wow, that's a really good question. Um, for Elsie, um, man, that's a good question. Oh gosh, let me think. Um, what's that story? I don't know if you remember that, like the main girl from the newest one. Um, she sings too. <laughs> okay. What about Dylan? What about? Oh man, I I love her so much. You know, I I know Timothy Shaw would make a great Dylan. I think I don't know. Yeah, I know he's kind of like a different than how you probably he probably kept, uh, looks in the book. I, I don't know, he, he had like a really intense intensity to him, especially in Dune. I think he would get like a really good deal, and I think, I don't know. <laughs> nice, awesome. There are such a wealth of characters and magical creatures in the series. If you could be one for the day, who would you be, why, and how would you use their powers in our world? You know what, I would love to be um, like, something in the woods because I love, I love I I think that's so cool like maybe like a like a Sasquatch just be like just in the woods chilling um yeah I've been having a lot of fun scare, scaring people which is probably bad thing to say but I think that I find the best part of being like one of the big creatures just like scaring people <laughs> yeah I've been having a lot of fun I don't know <laughs> Amari I know to me personally is the girl we all want to be friends with at school I mean she's kind strong loyal when it comes to her friends and family but also she shows compassion to those who others usually don't in her world 
Why did you choose to make the hero in your novel a black female character? And what did that choice about her identity mean for you? You know, that's, that's a really good question. So honestly, she just kind of popped into my head and uh, I kind of went with it. But I mean, there was a, there was a moment where I did kind of think about um, changing it to somebody like a more traditional type, you know, type of hero, uh, just because I, I took it, I remember taking it to my writing group, my, to my writing friends, and they were like, you know, you have a great, you know, great world, great everything, but, you know, you know publishers just don't, they don't buy books about Black characters, and I remember, I remember looking around like, man, you, might, you must be right, because I, 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 I couldn't never remember reading about a Black kid like me, um, but I found when I did not, if I took Amari out, you kind of lose the story, because so much of it is about her kind of finding her inner strength, and I kind of learned her to believe in herself, especially you know, as, a, as a Black kid, kind of learning to navigate in spaces that um, not uh, well, you're allowed, but you're not necessarily. It's not necessarily made for you. Uh, I think a lot of people can like that, especially black kids. And so I kind of just went with it. And said uh, this is just, this is the character, this is the story, and if it, if that never happens, then that never happens. And, but thankfully, it did. And, um, yeah. People like Amari, so that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love that, and I've always loved like everything magical. So like that was yeah. the whole thing. That was never a girl who looked like me when I was. Yeah. Reading. So I'm living through it now, and I'm all my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so amazing, right? It's like yourself. Oh, thank you so much. So, the next question is a fun one. If you could go anywhere in the world to write your next novel, the ideal writer's retreat, where would it be? You know, I, I, I actually came to London uh, early in the year and I loved it so much. Um, I would love to be able to go back and do it again. I don't know if that would ever happen, but I, I mean, just the people and the, and the places, I, and I, I love some of the laughs. I just love English accents. Uh, you got like, it, it sounds so much better when you guys say English than we, when we speak English. <laughs> so, um, I don't, know, I don't know. It just feels very, I don't know. I don't know. Just, I don't know. Just being there felt very kind of magical in itself. I don't know. So I'd love to come back and write and write there if I if I ever do that. That'd be amazing. Yeah, <laughs> come back, come back. Yeah. It didn't even happen. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome for sure. <laughs> um, so, what do you wish? What do you wish young BB Austin knew about the publishing world and becoming an author? And what wisdom would you give? To your younger self now having been through the process uh definitely just uh stick with it i think um like i said when i when, when it finally happened before i had kind of quit and uh um, <laughs> luckily it just kind of it kind of it kind of happened kind of almost happenstance but um definitely stick it stick with it kind of believe in yourself um the same thing kind of more i had to learn something i had to learn is kind of you know like your story is worth worth telling people people deserve to see that the hero can be anybody can be the hero of their own story um, and so just to stick with it and um, yeah, that's probably the biggest thing I would say to young, young BB. <laughs> love that, love that. And all of the young people work with, I'm sure they will like to hear that when they watch it back. So that's super helpful, <laughs> thank you. Awesome. So we end all of our interviews with our magic three questions, which I'm sure you will have no problem conjuring up. Right? That seems to be your realm. <laughs> okay. So number one, what three things can you not sit down without to write? Oh, I have to have my my little Dunkin' drink. Um, I, I drink them every day, which I probably shouldn't, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have uh, my jerky, which is probably and I, I, I can't make all of them food related, but this is like jerky, like beef jerky, and then my headphones. I have to have my headphones because. I write in like total silence. I, like I get distracted really easy. So I have to have like these headphones to kind of cover up and so I can really kind of like lose myself in my own imagination. <laughs> so do you not have any kind of music playing in your headphones? Oh no, I don't have anything. Yeah, they're like noise canceling. So they just like block everything out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Next up, what were your top three novels growing up? Uh, so the first is definitely uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, uh, I just kind of identified with Charlie so much. I got his background. He was like a kid who didn't come from a whole lot, but he he said these big dreams and it's just and the idea that they're just magical plays in the real world. It's kind of like Amari. So I thought that um, I always kind of I've been drawn to that kind of story. Um, the first thing, the first story uh, fantasy book I ever wrote was probably I read was probably um, uh, where the wild things are. And I should be if you guys are, if, I know it's super popular, but it's like a it's almost like a picture book almost. Um, and then after that, golly, what's um, I don't know. Maybe maybe Percy Jackson. I, I think that had like a huge influence on me a little later on. Um, just um, 
don't know, there's kind of that kind of kind of that first person um like um idea of a guy of a of a kid going to a fancy world. I think that's something that stuck with me. And I've I've been the fan of those kind of stories ever since. Yeah. That last one is a proper fan favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I've sure. seen a kid like open the series as like a present. Uh-huh. And like I have never <laughs> seen someone so excited. <laughs> so our final question in our magic three is finishing off the sentence. Black books matter because because it's important for um for black kids to be able to see themselves in stories, to know that their stories matter, um, to know that they can be the hero of the story. They're not just and that, and that is worthy of being a sidekick. They can have their own adventures. Um, I think it's just as important that other, other, other kids see Black people being a hero of their own story and be center of the story. Um, uh, because um, I think there's something validating about, um, you know, picking up a book and seeing a character that's not like you and learning about them um, and realizing that we're more than just stereotypes. I think that's very important. So uh, uh, I think that's why they matter. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving your time to speak with us. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm I'm always happy to speak with you. Thank you.